Hey guys, just a quick Friday afternoon vlog, a kind of a channel update to let people know what I have in mind going forward. And this is recorded on February 1st, 2019. So there are four things I'm going to continue to deliver or actually more structurally deliver in terms of the content in this site. So number one, I'm going to do uh, more commentary on new technology that comes out, whether it be frameworks and languages and so on, and the developments in that general space. Just to give you my perspective, the perspective of somebody who has been doing this for over 20 years. And uh, so as the news comes out, I'll be commenting on this as much as I can. Number two, I'm going to have a Q&A segment. I do answer questions on, from time to time on YouTube. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the best questions and I'll have official Q&A videos and I'll get into that as much as I can. And number three, I'm going to have uh, videos that are specific to career development, whether working for somebody, freelancing, or maybe starting your own business. So career development oriented videos. Again, I touch off on these things in other videos, but what I want to do with these categories, I want to create literally categories so that I probably create playlists in YouTube and maybe have a specific type of thumbnail or title structure so that people will be able to find what they want to find in terms of that stuff. And number four, I want to get deep dive once in a while in hard to understand concepts, not necessarily advanced concepts, but hard to understand concepts. So for instance, I might deep dive into object oriented programming and uh, show examples, teach why you do it, why, why inheritance would be used on rare occasions and another occasion using an interface. Uh, what decoupling is and why that's important, et cetera, et cetera, why fine-grained objects are important, or what refactoring is, why it's important, those sorts of things. Deep dive to take your basic skills and turn them, in, turn them into more advanced skills. Now, I cover a lot of this stuff, of course, in my official courses. Shameless self-promotion, links below. But still, I'm going to... Uh, in these four categories, respond to what's going on out there and what I see. And I'm going to try to create a little bit more of a structure. We'll see how long this lasts, uh, depending on uh, the response to videos, depending on how much time I have. Um, this is all in preparation because the Studio Web 4 platform, which is now live, it is uh, deployed. All new students and schools have been deployed to Studio Web 4 for, I guess, a couple months now. And we're just ironing out, ironing out, excuse me, a few little things here and there. Uh, I wouldn't even call them bugs, really. They're like, well, I guess you could, some things are bugs. Some things are just some minor adjustments. See, when you look at bugs, you got bugs of all different levels, like in terms of severity. Level one bugs are like critical. The system can't be used. It's going to cause problems. Level one bugs are bad. You should take care of that within the first uh, few weeks of launch for sure if not sooner. Uh, we're, at, we're at this point now with Studio Web 4, we're at level four bugs, which are re just real minor um, polish, minor polish, minor little things that have to be uh, refined here and there. And uh, now that the Studio Web 4, the core platform is in place, we're now building things around it, satellite complementary applications which I'm not going to get into right now. I don't want to tip my hand in terms of what's coming out, but we're going to have a bunch of new stuff coming out for Studio of Four that uh, it's supportive of the core curriculum that's already there, the Python and the web stack stuff with the HTML5, CS3, the JavaScript, and so on. Anyhow, these things, of course, anybody who's built software from A to Z knows that they always tend to take a little bit longer than you, you would uh, hope you know, that's why uh, rule of thumb, when you're building projects, make your estimate and multiply, multiply it by 2.4 times. So if you figure it's going to take you 200 hours, it's probably going to take, well, we'll do 100 hours. If you figure, I'm not that good at math. If you figure it's going to take you 100 hours to do, it might take you 240 hours to do. Yeah, you get the idea. Now, as the projects become more as they become bigger and more complex, the less accurate your ability to assess 
the time requirements are. Conversely, if they're smaller projects, 10 hours, five hour projects, 20 hour projects, you're far more likely to be accurate with your assessment. Now, the way you get better, I'm going off on a tangent. The way you get better to assess how long it's going to take you to do something is that you use a time tracker where you, you track all the things that you're doing uh, while you're building projects. And you do this a few times, your ability to judge how long it actually takes to do something is going to get, get it's going to get much better. That's why in my freelancer course, links below. That's why in my freelancer course, I um, I provide a tra time tracker spreadsheet template so that you have it right there for you. You just copy the spreadsheet to your own uh, computer and away you go. Bob's your uncle. Besides the other, I think it's four or five other templates that I provide contract templates and etc. Anyway, that's it for now. So those are the four things you can expect going forward on this YouTube channel. And also number five is probably more casual vlogs, maybe more relaxed stuff, stuff, you know, in conversation, if you will. I'm not sure I'm going to do that. I can't wait, especially in the summer, it will be a vlogging in the car with the, uh, the, the roof down. That's one of my, uh, my forms of relaxation is to drive in the convertible uh, up and down the mountain and around the city. It just chills me out. That with a coffee is a fantastic ride. Anyway, that's it. Have a good weekend. Ciao.